There is a time to bid goodbye to the old and the ordinary and to awaken the beauty within. That time is now. It is time to wake up and take charge of life. Awaken to a new way of thinking. Awakening with Brahma Kumaris. Welcome to Awakening with Brahma Kumaris. Our today's topic is Happiness Unlimited. Welcome, Sister Shivani. Thank you so much, Om Shanti. Sister Shivani, last time I was requesting you that honestly I wanted to be, uh, fill myself full of love so that I can give love to people which I haven't been able to give from so many years all my life and make other people also happy, myself happy, my surroundings happy. So what is the first step I do? As you told us that you have to fill yourself with love in order to give the others. How can I do it? First and foremost, let's understand that whether it's peace, whether it's love, whether it's happiness, they're not really independent. If I'm peaceful, that means I'm stable, that means I'm happy, and that means I accept people as they are, and that means I love them. If you're stable? See, if I'm peaceful, suppose I see you doing something which I feel is not right, but I'm still peaceful. It doesn't disturb me. It doesn't... But the moment you say, which I feel is not right, that means you're disturbed. Yeah. But one is to see it as a detached observer that this is not right. Let's see, I see you picking up a stick and hitting something over here. Tick, 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 tick like that. Yeah. Now one is, earlier it would get me irritated. You know, some people have that habit sitting with the ball pen. Yeah, tip, 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 tip yeah. Or then just cracking their knuckles like this. Or shuffling the something in a plastic bag and children eating something out of it. And these are small things, but it applies to small things and big things. These things sometimes can become the cause of irritation for me. But what irritates is not the ball pen, it's not the noise of the cracking of the knuckles, but the thought that I have about the act. And according to me, it's pretty rude to sit and play with the ball pen. This is my perception, if. Then, I get irritated with you, because you are doing that act, which according to me, is not right, even though you are having a good time. The, see, if you have any act in your mind, which is according to you, is right or wrong, that means still that act disturbs you, so you're disturbed somewhere, aren't you? No. One is, when you're hearing that ball pen going tick, click, click, tick, you start creating these thoughts. Why are they doing this? Don't they know this is not the way to be? This is quite impolite. I'm talking and they're playing with the ball pen. It is these thoughts which create the irritation. And I reject you for what you're doing. And the other thing is, that the ball pen is still going like this, but it's not creating a series of thoughts in my mind because I've created one thought, they have a choice what they want to do. It pulls a full stop to the rest of the thoughts. Now because if I'm able to create this thought, they have a choice. I may not be comfortable with what they're doing, but they are comfortable with what they're doing. And I respect their choice. Now there's no disturbance. There can be only two kinds of energy which goes from me to you, either rejection or acceptance. Normally when we don't accept the act, we don't accept the person doing the act. Mm -hmm -hmm. Okay, this is the meaning of sin and sinner. You know, okay. we used to read all this, it's the sin, punish the sin, not the sinner. Okay. I mean, the problem is with the act. Not with the person. With the person. But for me, the problem becomes, you are wrong. You are bad. You are so and so. So that means I reject. And when I reject, there is a disturbance here. And at that moment, there is no love. At that moment, there is rejection. Acceptance is love. And if I'm not accepting you as you are, then I'm rejecting you. 
we claim to each other at home, I love you. The mm. parents say, I always love my child. And they think they always love their child. But at those particular moments, when they're rejecting their child, it's not love at that time. So love means, I love you as you are. Accept you. As you are. Respect you. As you are. Not I respect you, but do this, do this, do this, do this, do this. Change this, change this, change this. I love you, but. But. There cannot be a but. But I love you. So this is what is, how can I be always loveful? It will automatically happen when I'm always stable. When is the time that I will experience that I'm not as loveful as I want to be? When I'm being very judgmental. That's the first time it stops the energy. Judgmental about people. We just need to check the whole day. And Why does one that judge people? I don't know. We have to ask ourselves. Again, a, it's a subtle way of trying to control people. Don't you think when you say, when you see something very awkward in somebody or say, oh, I think that uh, this guy is a little arrogant or he looks like an angry man. Don't you think we ourselves have that quality which we identify in that person? Uh, either we have or if we don't have, we'll have it very soon. Because I'm churning only on that particular quality or weakness, whatever. The more I see it's information creates thoughts, creates personalities. So if I feed myself with the information of the weaknesses of others, I'm only creating those quality thoughts. So will be my feeling, so will be my action, so will become my sanskar. At the Brahma Kumari, there's a very beautiful attention that we are taught to keep. Every time you meet someone, just look at their specialities. He must be having at least one good point, Everyone has one lots. speciality. Everyone has lots of them, lots of them. It's just our perspective that attention always goes towards weaknesses. And yet normally, if we don't keep attention, even if somebody has one weakness, we tend to look only at that, churn only about that, think only about that, and then behave in that manner. Supposing you see uh, in your neighbor, whenever you meet him, he is scolding either his staff or brother or sister or wife. He is always in anger, okay? Now, how do I go and uh, find his uh, good quality or some, something special in him which is good? Would he have a good quality? You, as you said that everybody has at least one, no? Everyone has. It's then, not about what I say. What do you think? You've met so many people in well, your lifetime. In my experience, I have experienced that every person on earth has got good qualities and some skill and that skill which he is good in, I am not. He is better than me at least in one skill. A skill and a quality. A skill is something that I do, cooking, acting, everything outside is a skill, driving, operating a computer. These are all skills, hmm. carpenter plumber, skills. These mm. are not qualities. These are skills. This is obviously everyone's going to be different depending on the kind of skills they have acquired and they're working accordingly. Qualities. What are the qualities of that person? That I need to catch. But if I focus on the weakness, I'll be thinking about the weakness. And as I'm thinking about it, it creates an impression. And then after some time, it's no longer your weakness. It's my weakness because I've got it printed here. If I keep on thinking about the neighbor hmm. who is all the time shouting, I become like him? Yes. Don't tell me. I've, see, I'm churning on anger. If I constantly, every time I meet him, I'm creating the thoughts of anger. And yet at the same time, if I look at another aspect of his and I look at his quality and I say, let's say I said to you yesterday, you have tremendous determination power. Now, that's a quality which I don't find in myself. So now I've been watching and looking and observing and learning that one quality of determination. So why look at anything else when there's something so beautiful to look at? Okay. So everyone has qualities. 
but we would rather waste our time looking at weaknesses. Somewhere it makes us feel better. Somebody is so humble and sweet and is always smiling. What a beautiful quality that is. Yes. So now I can just look at that individual who is a personification of humility and I say here is a being who is able to be humble irrespective of whatever is happening around. That means even I have the power to do the same. I can do that also. That's why I started the, the in, the, in the beginning of the episode and yesterday also I told you that I want to acquire or maybe it is already there, I want to uh, find my own quality of love with me. Love. So the first thing that to find love is to stop judging people. Oh. See, I can't love someone whose weaknesses I'm looking at. When you judge people, you always do look at the weaknesses or it's judgmental just... no you're being very judgmental and somewhere i think we learn it from the media it is very interesting when you're sitting and watching a movie or a television serial or a cricket match and we're just openly passing our judgments about what we're watching on the screen they shouldn't be wearing this they should be wearing this they shouldn't have been saying it like this he shouldn't have played like this he should be sitting like this trying to control that one across the screen. And then, once I create that sanskar of being judgmental about the actor who's on the screen, I then carry that sanskar out into my drama. And then you can just watch the whole day with people. I might not be saying it to them, but it's on my mind. He shouldn't be eating like this. He shouldn't be walking like this. He shouldn't be moving like this. What is he, he could wearing? have done like this. Is this a place to wear, wear this kind of thing? It's a funeral and look at the color what he's wearing. It is such a big, great big party and he's wearing jeans. He's wearing glares in the evening. So many things, all Just this is... Just watch one day, it's a very interesting game. How judgmental we can be and we're creating thoughts which are not in our control. Mm -hmm. They're not going to change. But we are creating energy of rejection and my parameter of love is going down. I should do this when I'm at home. Yeah, this is, see, spirituality is a game. It's fun. Set a target the whole day today. I will accept everyone as they are. Then start the game. Now, if I start my day with the morning meditation, today I accept everyone as they are. Now, start the day. Those old sanskars will pop up. But there is the new belief system, the new operating system, which will send a signal, accept everyone as they are. And immediately I'll say, okay, full stop. Full stop. I like the word game. Like we play with children. We say, okay, well, let's see. We'll throw this ball. It should not fall down. This can be such a nice game played uh, with a child, Suresh Obra, within me. And I'm not going to be judgmental today at all. Come this is on. very subtle checking, but... And it has to be... It's, it's nice when you make it, keep it as a game. Yeah, but try and keep it throughout the day. And for that, we do a simple technique. After every one hour, pause for one minute just to remind what was the game today. You know, like fasting. If I decide that today is Tuesday and I'm fasting today, but somewhere during the day, if I forget that I'm fasting today, then I'm just at eating what everyone around me is eating. And they say, oh, I was supposed to be fasting today. So because deep-rooted sanskars, very, very deep, if I don't remind myself constantly, the whole day will pass and in the night I will remember, oh, today I was supposed to accept everyone as they were. Mm. So a gentle reminder. It can be on your phone every one hour. Yes, every one hour. Just a little beep to remind. Sit back, one minute, relax and create a thought. I am a loveful being and so is everyone else and I accept them as they are. This can be little one minute meditation. One minute meditation. Or maybe 30 seconds after every hour. And supposing we are out of the house for say 14 hours max. Even out of 14 hours, what are we giving us? Seven minutes? 14 minutes? Nothing at all, isn't it? But this one minute has a deep impact on the entire hour. And if there is a chance of forgetting, in the meantime, it's that next one minute. And there's the reminder. Now, many people would say, if we accept people as they are, does that mean they're going to do what they want? 
Does that mean I say nothing to my child? What about the discipline? What about the discipline? So this is understanding. Accept people as they are means till this moment, what you are doing, how you are behaving, your responses, your reactions, I accept them as they are, means I send you energy of empowerment. Not judgmental. No disturbance here. Can you explain the meaning of sending you energy of empowerment? I can send only two energies, either positive or negative, which means either acceptance or rejection. If I creating a thought here inside, why are they like this? Why are they talking like this? Why are they behaving like this? Don't they understand? This is not the way to be. How much to tell them? They just don't never be able to. Tuk, 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 tuk. This is the conversation. I don't send that. It happens to me. No, I create it. No, sometimes I find uh, when, when I'm playing my cook shouting and with somebody else and loudly he's doing and he's not even switching on the exhaust fan and I can hear uh, the, the cooking and the smell of all that thing of the onions he, they cook for themselves. I don't send them, it happens. I create. I used to think that I, it ha he's, he's doing all this nonsense, what's happening? Yeah, that's what we saw. On he's disturbing story. me while I'm praying. No, I'm getting disturbed by what he's doing. And then really my prayer is of not too much use at that time. Because prayer was meant to be very pure, positive, elevated thoughts. So I'm not really praying at that time. So he's doing what he has to do. If I'm not comfortable, I will just get up and pass an instruction, a request. But I do not use his act to irritate myself. So where does the acceptance come here when I'm praying and they are doing all that? And I do not get irritated. Mm -hmm. See, the checking is here. The checking is not here. The checking is here. We keep on getting irritated. Why are they doing this? Don't they understand I am praying? Do they have to make so much but noise? But he knows if I do it every day and every day I have to inform him. Every day don't do it. Every day. Every day they the know that. The focus is not on them. The focus is on myself. If every day they are doing it, every day I can say a sentence rather than creating hundred thoughts here and then sending that energy. I, I, you know, what I used to say, feel that I have given you a list of hardly three, four things. Early morning do this, then the tea, then we, I go to pray, and then people should be silent at least for that, that half an hour. I've been reminding one day, two days, if, it is, if it's somebody is new, it's okay. But even the old stuff, they forget. So, I get irritated. I create the irritation. So now tell me what, where, where this acceptance of yours come, because everybody says, if I am accepting, so let them, let the kitchen guys do what they want, yeah. let the uh, driver come late, let everything happen. No, just don't let their act disturb you here. That is acceptance. And without getting disturbed, we say, please do it this way. And we can say that every day. It's not very easy for people to change sanskars. We understand that now. Okay, when I can't what change. What happens, like you said, mm. he's not changing. He's not changing, but we are changing. We are getting irritated. So who's more powerful? Mm. We couldn't change him, but he could change us. So let's retain first our protection. Just try. Tomorrow again it will happen. Again, you'll sit to pray, to meditate, and there will be noise. Just one thought. This does not create the disturbance. I have a choice. And then send out a message. I request you to please stop doing this for the next half an hour. There's a lot of difference. So you were talking about the acceptance and the people. When I don't create the disturbance, I have accepted them. When I have accepted them, I've sent positive energy. This positive energy and then the word, or the sentence, or the request, or the order, or the instruction, whatever your role may be, or the discipline, whatever word we want to call it. But first, the acceptance energy, and then the instruction, 
the work will be done. Tell me one thing in your language. Can I say, okay, here's a soul who's doing the role of a cook, and here's a, role, a soul who's uh, playing the role of a cleaner in the house. Both are talking. I've been telling them every time. Fine. What is my role? My role is to accept, keep quiet, just tell them, come back. That's all. Instead of getting my thing disturbed. And earlier, long time back, I used to just leave my prayers and get up, get angry, come back and I couldn't pray again. Because the mind has just got disturbed. Then I couldn't do anything. That's all. So this is that little attention. And it's not only with the cook, the tribe, or the, the children, my spouse. Oh, she speaks on phone when uh, so the phone rings two or three times when I'm in my meditation. The whole day also, if you watch, be so judgmental. When I'm judging people, I am not loving people. This is definite. Tell me, uh, I'm sorry to interrupt. The three phone calls while I'm praying or meditating, my wife speaks. And the rest of the day, the 30 others. Why these three phone calls I remember and the whole day, the 30 years, others, either I'm writing a letter or I'm on computer or I'm watching a TV, then it doesn't disturb me. Why these three are disturbing me? Because I have asked her not to talk on the phone when I'm praying. So I expect that she should understand that I am My praying. control. Yes, my trying to... I'm control. the boss. People should do things according to what I think is right. It's a very <laughs> deep belief system. The world should go according to my team. See how I am realizing things. It's a very deep belief system and everybody lives with this belief system. People should do things the way I think they should be done. Remaining 27 calls you accept. Okay. But these three calls you reject. It's the acceptance and the rejection is in the mind. You know, there are people who have their houses very close to the airport, mm. very close to the railway station. They have the noise the entire day, but they have good sleep. Why? Because they've accepted that they have chosen to live near the airport and the noise of the flight is going to be a part of it. This acceptance lets them sleep well. Lullaby. It's an, see again, it's very important. It's not the noise. It's my mind which rejects or accepts the noise, which creates the disturbance. I could get disturbed with one mobile phone, but that carrier flying over me doesn't disturb because I've accepted that. Oh yes, uh, Bals, uh, just now when you say uh, the phone call of my wife of, or the disturbance of the kitchen, so many other things which go on the street, the honking and people shouting and some hawkers selling things. Why don't they disturb me? Because you haven't ordered them not to do it, so you're not offended. Ah, Shivani sister, you're opening my eyes. Huh? This is where you accepted that noise because you know that you cannot control the traffic on the road, but you can the control your The school bus, life. the hawkers, the honking. Children fighting on the street, nothing happens. But one phone call or one, this kitchen thing. Mm. Because I have ordered them not to do it and they are doing it. So it's that thought which is the disturbance, not the phone call and not the utensils. Tomorrow, accept the noise of the utensils and that will be like your sound effects while the, you're praying. I hope this realization here changes me. Is that the first step? This is the first step, acceptance. And then it could be the acceptance of the noise of the phone, or it could be acceptance of the noise of the person, what they are saying. It's only a thought whether to accept or to reject. Will you teach me a, a small meditation on love and acceptance? Hmm? Okay. Let's watch ourselves today the entire day, moving through this journey of life, playing our roles with a number of other actors, just watch gradually with each one in every scene. Accepting them as they are for what they do, how they speak 
and how they behave. No act and no word can now create disturbance on my mind. I accept them. They have a reason for what they are doing. The world, my family, is not in my control. I can only take charge of the way I think about them. Behaviors, temperaments, reactions, it's just their response. But I remain stable. And as I remain stable, energy of love and acceptance flows from me to them. Nothing and no one can touch the stability of my mind because now I have taken charge. Look at that one particular thing which every day we thought, this irritates me. And now look at yourself in the same scene with a changed perspective. I accept them as they are. Om Shanti. Om Shanti. Let's accept people as they are. Let's be stable. Let's love ourselves and love the world. When we are peaceful and stable, we are happy and we accept others as they are. It means we love them because love is unconditional acceptance. The energy of love is our natural quality. It gets blocked when we become judgmental about people. When we think about others' weaknesses, then their weakness becomes the quality of our thoughts and very soon a part of our personality. Let us become aware and observe one quality in everyone we meet and interact with. Let us be in the awareness, I am a loveful being and so is everyone I meet and I accept each one as they are. Accepting people means their behavior does not create a disturbance in our mind. We tell them what is right but with the energy of love, not rejection. If you wish to discuss your problem or have a question to ask or want to know your nearest Raj Yoga Meditation Center, write to us at awakening at pkmail.org or call us on UK 440-75304-26770 USA 1-347-448-2359 i